Hey, it's Joel. I'm here with Brian of Zesty Technology. I read it on his shirt. I didn't get a chance to film anything at their booth at Murph because it was crazy packed and full of people and it was all I could do to just walk five feet at a time. But Brian's in Seattle for a crazy reason. We're going to get at that in just a moment. But he and his partner have Zesty Technology. They create the Nimble Extruder mm -hmm. and uh, I want to talk about it and show it to you. Right here on. G'day. <laughs> this is the 3D printing nerd. <laughs> this episode of 3D Printing Nerd is sponsored by Squarespace. Welcome back. Uh, like I said, this is Brian from Zesty Technology. Hi, Brian. How you going, Joel? Brian, as you know, doesn't sound like me because he's <laughs> from Australia, which is on the other part of the world. Is it true that it's it's the seasons are different down there? Like here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's getting into springtime. Does yes. that mean it's getting into winter time? Uh, autumn, I think. Oh, really? Autumn towards winter, yes. Okay. Yeah. What is Zesty Technology? It's essentially the collaboration between myself and the Lickler Shapers, who is someone who I met on a Slack channel that I started for the 3D printer that I backed on Kickstarter. Then Zesty Technology was formed because you collaborated on a thing? Or was the company formed and then you put your minds together and then uh, came it, up with the it thing? It was, uh, you know, I collaborated with a bunch of really cool people and Lickler and I just really hit it off and we're like, hey, we could probably design a Delta printer. So we started to. <laughs> That's a dangerous path to go down. <laughs> it is. Well, we did it to try and solve the problems that we saw, or some of the problems oh. that we saw with 3D printing. Okay. I've got friends back home in Australia who've done successful Kickstarters that were multi-million dollar Kickstarters. Oh, So I, wow. I spoke to some of those people and they, it was really good to get that knowledge from someone who's been really successful about the problems they had that doing well can actually hurt you because you can't scale, <laughs> for instance. And I thought, two guys trying to make a a full printer on Kickstarter was just logistically destined to fail. Sure. So uh, we had come up with the Nimble as part of one of the things that we wanted because I really at that time wanted to be able to print flexible filaments. Oh, okay. So I had like a half a meter long Bowden tube and that, that was not going to happen with no, that. No, it's not. So, so we wanted to try and have some form of direct drive. And so we had designed a version of the Nimble and I put on my charm and convinced Lickler that we should just do the Nimble because logistically easier and also applicable to any 3D printer, more right. or less. Okay. So. But this though, with your desire to create a Delta printer, mm -hmm. Delta exists with the notion that the head has to be fairly light, light. right? Right? Yes. because yep. it can move around quickly mm -hmm. and so then the nimble is a direct representation of that right yes, the nimble yeah. because you want a direct drive but you needed that light Lightness, head yes. correct yeah huh. okay and so the iteration was mostly me going we need to make it lighter we need to make it smaller because <laughs> the the initial iteration was quite large comparatively and then uh, i came up with the idea for the breach what's the breach uh, that's really the thing that we think makes the nimble stand out compared to other extruders. Well, I guess before we go into it, mm. let's talk about the Nimble a little bit mm -hmm. because it's not a direct drive as as we know today. No. And it's not a Bowden system as we know today because it's direct drive, but the motor is decoupled from the head. Correct, yes. I mean, actually, at Murph, I heard probably a more apt term to describe it than what we use ourselves, which well, is direct extruder, not direct drive. Oh. So we call it, we've been calling it a remote direct drive. Right. Because we have the drive remote. Oh, sorry, the stepper remote, but the driving is direct. Yeah. But I think direct um, extruder works. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And, and this is the cable that runs it, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. So an executive summary of how it works would be, let me see if I can guess it. Sure. The motor here twists this innards That's of this right. cable. Yep and then it goes into the head here, mm -hmm. and then it translates that twisty motion into spinny motion of a hub bolt <laughs> you got it. that pushes the filament, <laughs> yep. or yep. retracts it if need be, yes, right? Yes, correct. Okay, yep. so that must mean, I mean, if you've decoupled the motor from the head, it must make it a lot lighter, but you still get the advantages of a direct drive. Yes, yeah, so we can do oh. very flexible filaments. Uh, we can do X60. Oh, really? Yes. It's, That's rubber band it's, material, it's wet essentially. Yeah. <laughs> wet spaghetti. And, and we can do NinjaFlex. I think we've got customers that are doing NinjaFlex at like 60 or 80 millimeters a second. But I know I can do it at 40 millimeters a second, no, no problem. So We're talking wet spaghetti, like... like well, NinjaFlex Ninja Flex is not wet spaghetti. Oh, oh, I yeah. see, I see. Okay, okay. You, you definitely have to slow it down to do X60, but it will still print it. So like a direct drive, 
than where the hub bolt is, then there's that little the little space. You try to the, the filament path comes down mm -hmm. and and leaves, and you you try to curl it around the path around the the, the curvature of the, the hub, hub bolt, mm -hmm. so that the filament doesn't poke out. Yes. Right. Yeah. So it's then. Is that similar here? Yeah, I mean, because of the breach, we have a fully constrained filament path. So we have PTFE up from the hot end, or if you have a full metal hot end, then the adapting mount will just go straight on the bottom of the hot end, and you, then the mount will come up to the base of where the filament comes out of the nimble. Oh, okay. So it's always fully constrained, and because we can open the breach, I don't know if we'll get a good shot, but I'm sure we'll get a close-up We'll get a good later. shot of that, yeah. Um, then it... Uh, this filament stuck in because the nozzle cooled down while it was in there. But basically, you can just open the breech, pull the filament out, oh. put, put new filament in, close the breech. Okay. So, you know, you don't have the spring you got to hold in while you feed it through. Right. And so this seems like this is a similar action to the Wade's extruder, like what you would have on a Lulzbot, where you, you can unlock a mechanism. Probably, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's similar in scope to that. It's putting pressure against the filament. Mm -hmm just when it's locked into place, right? Yes, yeah. And the reason I'm holding this right now is because we don't have a part. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Something so, was left at Murph. Well, yeah, we bought, I bought units to sell at Murph and they all sold out. And somehow I managed to forget to have some <laughs> extra sleeve clamps. So we're printing them. So we've got an Ender 3 Pro right here. And this is the one that was at Murph, correct? Correct, yes. Okay, yeah. and we have everything almost set up but the parts that connect these ends. And we're actually printing them right over there in High Five Blue on the Prusa Mark III. So in just a moment, we should be able to find out whether or not this works. Fingers crossed, right? <laughs> Fingers crossed, yeah. Okay, I guess we'll, we'll just, it's got a couple minutes left. We'll be right back. The plan was to actually take these two pieces off of the Prusa Mark III, printed in High Five Blue. They printed great. They did. They printed incredibly yeah. well. Yeah. But then um, Brian, says, oh look, we're missing another part, the coupler. So it's not a standard Z-axis coupler that this uses. This uses a coupler that has one side for the NEMA 17 and the other side for this square steel tube, square, it's not square a tube. drive. Square yeah. drive, and uh, it would fit in just like that. So now what we have to do is model, model it up. And then we will use um, Nylon X from Matter Hackers because it's carbon fiber nylon, it should hold it. I think so. It should I hold it so. just fine. So we're getting there. As you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an easy to use online website building tool, whether you're doing it for your professional business where you're making gobs of money or your side hustle where you're hoping to make gobs of money. What I like to use it for is just showing off something. And in this case, I'm gonna show off the thumbnails that I've made for my After the Five series. After the Five is the show after the show. Once I give you a high five and I lower my hand, After the Five starts. Each of those gets their own thumbnail. And so I'm gonna use Squarespace to create a gallery of some of my favorite recent thumbnails for After the Five. What's great is Squarespace has these templates that allow me to get started fast and easy. And using a template, I'm able to customize the experience that I want the viewer to see for the website that I'm creating. And in the end, you end up with a gallery of my After the Five thumbnails. It's fantastic. And if you have your own gallery you want to create, you might want to consider using Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com forward slash 3D printing nerd to get 10% off your first purchase. I'm on the other side now. Brian's cleaning off prints. What's going on? Uh, Why are you cleaning that off? Is that, supports, oh, we, supports, supports. So we had to print it with support. <laughs> cleaning out the supports, and then where does that go? Ooh, okay, and that's so, where the, the drive shaft goes. Cool. Okay, so you're cleaning that up. You're getting this prepared. Yep. We've got the other piece going on the pulse. It's printing a piece. It's at 10%. Go, little printer, go. There it is. It's just a big cylinder. So normally these come with all of these pieces yes. already pre-printed or pre-manufactured or all fabricated, right? All made of right? nylon, yes. Yeah. So the piece that you're holding now would normally be in SLS nylon? Correct. Yeah. Okay. H from, from a HP Jet Fusion machine. And the piece that we're printing in nylon X would normally be in what material? Aluminium. Black anodized aluminium. It sounds, it sounds like we're going to be able to get by, but uh, the pieces that you have prefabricated sound much nicer. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Is it going? Is it going? Yep. Hey, it's, it's in. Is it in-in? Yep. 
It's in. <laughs> it is. I can. I can tell from here. It's spinning. Yeah, I can see from this side actually. Good job, Brian. Yay! It worked. Teamwork. Teamwork. Hey, look, the print is done. Ooh. Grab it. Let's go. Oh yeah, it is kind of squarish, isn't yeah. it? Brian makes a mess. So Brian, normally a customer wouldn't have to go through with this, right? Because no. <laughs> this is something that we're doing because parts were left at the Midwest Rep Wrap Festival. Yes. But this is why 3D printing is great. We have the Nimble Remote Direct Drive system installed on the Sender 3 Pro. Now we need to actually turn it on and calibrate it? Yep. May I? Level the bed, yes, go for it. There we go. So then you just, uh... You just clip it in, right? Yeah, so straight into the tube. Push until blue comes out. There we go, blue. There's blue. And close the breech. The breech, that's right. Brian leveled the bed on the Ender 3 Pro. I didn't need to show you that because everybody has to level their printer bed. <laughs> but right now, it's printing Protopasta 210C, 60C on the bed, and he jumped the speed to 400. So it's, it's cooking, it's moving pretty quick. Look at it go. It's very nimble, I would say. I think that's an apt term. It's quite nimble. <laughs> yes. What I do like though, in our, <laughs> it's not exactly circular because of the holes we drilled, but it sure is working. Function over form in this case. I guess, yeah, function yeah. over form. Hey, <laughs> we made it work. It's moving quick. I guess uh, we just let it print now. That's gonna be a quick print, right? It's uh, about half an hour, I think. Everything seems to take a half hour now. I know, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll get some footage of this printing. We'll come back and we'll take a look and we'll verify that it worked and then we'll summarize and be okay. Sounds good. But it's going quick. Still going. And the, the feed rate is still 400%. Show me what you got. We're gonna see, it's a 30 to one gear ratio, right? Yes, yes. And so if we hold onto the spool, it should pick up the printer if everything is, if the spool is strong enough. But maybe I can just lift it. <laughs> well, the filament snapped. <laughs> <laughs> Testing is fun. Well, you saw it lift the printer up. I did, there, yeah, so. yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's there. Yeah. Well, the quality in that is really good. Look at that, there it is. We have the feed rate turned up to 400%. Yes, it is top of the headless because we broke the filament. That's not too shabby. Uh, I think this this shows that there's that it works. And so just like that, are we done? I think we are. Okay, I think we should be done because that was, <laughs> <laughs> What time is it now? <laughs> it's like three o'clock in the morning. We're four Red Bulls in. It's a dangerous time to be alive, my friend. <laughs> this all started off with Brian being in town for the Drupal conference, mm -hmm. which you still have to go to next week. I do. Uh, I just saw him at the Midwest Rep Rap Festival, and, the, and I got to see their technology, but I didn't get to film it because it was so crowded. Was since, he was in, since he was in Seattle, I mean, why not stop by and show it off? We forgot some, well, not we, you forgot some parts. <laughs> I didn't forget any parts. But thanks to 3D printing, we were able to print the parts and get it working. We used High Five Blue here and, uh, and here, and then we used Matter Hacker's Nylon X right here. Yeah, and it goes real fast. So the idea is that this is a rem help me out a remote direct. Let's just call it direct extruder. Okay, it's a remote. <laughs> it's a direct extruder. A remote direct extruder. Yeah. If you uh, for a direct drive, if you decouple the motor from the head and you move it somewhere else, but then you still allow it to directly drive the filament, you're taking the weight off of the head, which means you can travel faster, less chance of there being ghosting. Yes. Yep. But also, because it's a direct drive, you can still do flexibles. Correct. Yes. On a Bowden system, it's not really going to reduce the weight, so to speak. You might no. add a little bit of weight, but like you said, it's going to make it a lot easier to print flexibles, flexibles because it's no longer a Bowden system. It is a remote direct drive system. Correct. Did I get that right? <laughs> you got it right that time. Fantastic. Yes. I don't know what there is left to do. We showed that it worked. Uh, this I, I tried to make this similar to what a Murph experience would be just in my house. And it was, <laughs> well, I guess there are a lot of 3D printers at Murph. So people could. And there's could, a lot of 3D printers here. There are a lot of 3D printers here. <laughs> Yeah. Any final thoughts that you want to relay to the audience, Brian? If you want to print flexibles and you can't currently, maybe check out the Nimble. How would they do that? Here we go. How would you go and and uh, you, go buy a Nimble? You would go to 
zesty.tech. Oh, such a such a dot com domain. Yes. <laughs> uh, and just be aware, we're probably going to have a little bit of shipping delay for a little while. Well, you said that uh, the wait or the lead time on the shaft here is is the main up, factor, right? Yes. Yeah. Up so, to how long? Uh, it can be up to six weeks. That's a lot. But we're time. ordering a lot of them, so okay. It'll well, be good. delays until that comes in, and then it'll be. Normally, I ship within two days. Wow, that's quick. Yeah. Obviously, uh, Tom Tom Sandladder made a, an excellent video on their booth at Murph. I will link it below, and I'd love for you to check that out as well. Um, beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys, as always. High five. You want to high five. Nailed it. Take care, everyone. <laughs>